Welcome to Church 212, Pray for America. And we are so glad that you've joined our prayer meeting here tonight. And Stephanie, we got together as a team and we said, you know, it's really important for us to pray during this time. And thank you for bringing leadership access to that and to helping us to really be here tonight. And we welcome you there in your home or wherever you might be here. And of course, you may not be able to join us live, so you're watching at another time. But we're so glad you're here. And we're going to have a special time of prayer. What you can expect is we're going to have several prayer partners along the way. And different participants is going to be leading segments of prayer. And so we know this is going to be a very special, meaningful time for all of you. So, Stephanie, why don't you get us going here? Okay, sounds great. Well, first of all, I want to start tonight by reading a quote by Andrew McCourt. And he said that on May 25th, someone took their knee and knelt down to bring death. But today we're going to take our knee and we're going to bow down to bring life. And I just want to be an encouragement to all of us during this time right now that we would be a light that would shine in this world of darkness. And I just want to encourage you and I want you to read along with me the scripture found in 1 John 1, 5. It says, the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus on the behalf of our nation that is in need. Restore our vision of faith in which our nation was created. We thank you, Father, for your goodness and we cry out for your mercy and your grace upon us during this time in our world. You've blessed us to be a light to all nations, yet we have rebelled and disregarded your instruction. We join united asking you to not turn your face from us, but to heal our land. We pray that we will become dependent upon you once again. Forgive us of our sin and heal our land as we repent and turn to you. We cry out to you to help us stand strong once again as one nation under God. Create in us a pure heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within us. Thank you for being slow to anger, quick to forgive, full of compassion. Save us who call upon you in the name of Jesus. Please join us in worship. We're a chosen generation. We are a chosen generation, rise of only nation. God, we live for you. You have called us out of darkness into light so glorious. God, we live for you. God, we live for you. God, we live for you. We run. We run. With passion for your name, we run. Freedom. You've broken every chain we run. Our God will not be moved. Our God will never be shaken. We run to you. We run. We are a chosen generation. Rise up, holy nation. God, we live for you. You have called us out of darkness into light so glorious. God, we live for you. We run with passion for your name. We run freedom. You've broken every chain. We run. Our God will not be moved, 
our God will never be shaken. We run to you. We run. We are a chosen generation. Rise up, holy nation. God, we live for you. You have called us out of darkness into light so glorious. God, we live for you. And our God will not be moved. Our God will never be shaken. Our God will not be moved. Our God will never be shaken. Our God will not be moved. Our God will never be shaken. We run to you. We run. We are. We are a chosen generation. Rise up, holy nation. God, we live for you. You have called us out of darkness into light so glorious. God, we live for you. You are everything, more than all we need. God, we live for you. God, we live for you. I found this world to be not enough for me God we live for you God we live for you yeah oh yeah we live for you we live for you we live for you we live for you. Yeah. Every breath you put in our hearts, Lord God, by your grace, we pour back in praise. It's your breath in our lungs. We pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. Yeah. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only you give life you give life you are love you bring light to the darkness you give hope you restore every heart that is broken great are you lord it's your bread and it's your bread in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. You give life. You give life. You are love. You bring life. To the darkness you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. 
Great are you, Lord. It's your breath. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you. Praise the Lord. We do pour out our praise to him tonight. You know, so much is going on in our world right now, and it has been for several months now. And I know we have faithfully been praying and trusting God to get us through these hard times in our life. But I want to bring to our remembrance tonight, actually, what we're going through, that this is a spiritual battle. You know, oftentimes, we get our mind and we get our eyes on the circumstances and we watch a lot of the TV and we talk to our friends about what's going on. You know, but I want us to look deeper into what's going on. And this being a, a strong spiritual battle, the only way we're going to win is we're going to win with our, our knees bowed and praying to God and pushing back the forces of darkness. You know, in Ephesians, the word tells us that we're fighting against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in the heavenlies. And we have been given the authority, Mike, to push back those forces of darkness through prayer. So I would like for you to um, talk to us a little bit and lead us in prayer with uh, praying over our government. Well, in reference to what you were just saying, I was on a conference call today with several pastors, and one of the pastors said, you know, I really got away and sought the Lord, and he said I was becoming like Elijah, who was looking for God in the whirlwind, looking for God in the earthquake, looking for God in the fire, and he said I was missing the still, small voice. And so I hope that we listen to what God's saying because it's the spiritual part, mm -hmm. not just looking at all that noise out there. And listen to what Paul tells us because we're going to spend some time praying for the government. He says, I urge you then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all people, for kings and for those who are in authority, that you may live peaceable and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior who wants all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. 
For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord like the rivers of water. He turns it wherever he wishes. Every way of man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the heart. To do righteousness and justice is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. Proverbs 21, 3. For this has been decreed, and this is from Daniel chapter 4. It's been decreed by the watchers, demanded by the holy ones. The purpose of this decree is that the whole world may understand that the Most High dominates the kingdom of this world and gives them to anyone he wants to, even to the lowliest of men. And he also says in 1 Chronicles chapter 7, and I know you've quoted verse 17, but listen what precedes and follows it. At times I might shut up the heavens so that no rain falls, or command grasshoppers to devour your crops or plagues among you. Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way, I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and restore their land. My eyes will be open and my ears attentive to every prayer made in this place. What a promise, huh? <laughs> For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and the ears are attentive to his prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those that do evil. 1 Peter 3, 12. So we want to pray, as the Bible tells us, for our leaders. And would you join in prayer? And I hope that you have a prayer list that you're praying for our leaders. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you right now. We list up President Trump and Vice President Pence. We thank you for the Secretary of State, the whole cabinet, and those who are counselors around him. We ask you, Lord, that you would guide their hearts with wisdom. Just as we read your wonderful promise that the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord and you can turn him whichever way you want to. We pray for Governor Newsom. We pray for Supervisor Perez. We pray for Representative Ruiz. And we thank you for putting these people in places of authority. You said they are ministers of God. So we thank you for two things that you guide them with wisdom, and at that time they hear your voice, but also for your people to hear your voice. And that, Lord, we would see you do great and mighty things upon us. We invoke your promise here that if we who are called by your name will humble ourselves and pray, we do not turn our hearts of anger or frustration toward the wicked, we look to the church, for you said judgment must begin at the house of God, and we look to your people, and it's that promise that you gave us is to your people. If we would humble ourselves, we come, Lord, as a nation and humble ourselves. We repent of our national sins and the departure that we've had from you and your people who have gone opposite from your will. We return unto you. For you said if we would draw nigh to you, you would draw nigh to us. So we just ask you that right now you would set up those that you want in places of authority. And those who are set in place right now, we want to pray, Lord, for them to hear your voice. Help them to sort through the noise of everything else. Help them, dear Lord, to hear the still, small voice of your hand of guidance as you set up kingdoms and tear down another, that you're so mighty that you will, as the most high God, give guidance. We surrender into your hands, our nation. And thank you, Lord, that you are building a great nation that we've declared is under you and in thereby having liberty and justice for all. Thank you for your grace upon us. We invoke your grace in hand as we pray in Jesus' name.
Amen. And now we've got Frank Anderson praying for our law enforcement. You know, I've got uh, such a prayer list that uh, Pastor Mike just referred to. Um, and it, um, the fact that I'm a veteran and uh, former law enforcement officer and I still teach at the Law Enforcement Academy, um, I'm very sensitive to what's going on right now. Even in the midst of the uh, pandemic issues that we, we have, we, there's unrest and there's uh, conflict. But before I do anything, I wanna, I wanna pray for the family of George Floyd. He's the man a few days ago whose life was snuffed out and his family is in grief right now and Father in Jesus' name, I bring his entire family, his extended family before you and ask that you would grant uh, healing to their hearts. They're, they're, they're troubled right now and there are uh, issues that are causing anger and resentment. But Father, I pray that the, um, the healing of the Holy Spirit would rest upon their lives right now. I pray that they would be free from bitterness, anger, and resentment, and that as they receive the, the comfort of the Holy Spirit, that they can um, grow through this and, and go beyond this. Lord, I pray for our land. Um, our nation was founded on peaceful protest and, and uh, not so peaceful protest. <laughs> we um, experienced the, the birth of our nation uh, through the blood uh, that was spilled on the battlefield. But it's my desire, Father, that uh, we would be able to walk in peace. The, the peace that was, that was won would be that which we could walk in right now. I, I, I pray, Lord, that the, the lawlessness that is breaking out throughout the land would um, be quenched, that would be quelled. I pray, Lord, that, that you would have your way in the hearts uh, of those that are uh, causing the, the unrest to, um, to, to see you for who you really are and hear your voice. We pray that there would be healing in our land. There are others who've, who've given their lives in this uh, struggle that's taking place right now. Uh, the family of George Floyd is, is grieving. There's a, there are families of others who've been wounded and, and killed in, in the unrest and the chaos. Father, I pray that you would um, deliver us from the chaos in this land. I'm mindful of the fact that I'm a, an American citizen, but I am a citizen of the kingdom of God who happens to be an American. I'm not a Christian who happens to... Um, I'm a Christian who happens to be an American. I'm not an American who happens to be a Christian. Um, in the book of Jeremiah, the prophet wrote these words, also seek the peace and the prosperity of the city to which I've carried you. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Father, I do pray that you would bring peace and prosperity to our land. And we know that the Prince of Peace brings the answer. Lord, I, I, I cry out to you this evening and ask that you would bring healing to our land. As Pastor Mike um, alluded, I, I, on my list, on my prayer list that, for, uh, that I pray uh, regularly, I pray for our president. I also pray for Vice President Pence. He's a heartbeat away from the White House. I pray for Speaker Pelosi, she's two heartbeats away from the White House. And the, the uh, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, uh, Father, I pray that as these people make decisions in the seat of government, Lord, that they would be uh, open, their hearts and ears would be open to the wise counsel of those that you have surrounded them with. I thank you that you have brought uh, godly uh, advisors and counselors to uh, give guidance and direction and, and wisdom and insight to our leaders. And I pray that you would continue to surround our leaders with those who uh, walk 
Um, in, in lockstep with you, Father, under the, the guidance and, and direction of, of you and your word, I, I, I think of uh, Chief Justice uh, John Roberts, uh, Mitch McConnell, Diane Feinstein, Kamala Harris, our, our senior lawmakers, but right now I turn my attention to the law enforcement that is, um, that has impact on me and you. Those of you watching me perhaps are uh, elsewhere, but the, the, um, the sheriff of Riverside County is Chad Bianco. And Father, I thank you that he is a godly man, a believer who walks before you and, is, and, and seeks your face. And I thank you that you have surrounded him with advisors and those who could give him uh, wisdom and insight. Um, I pray that you would continue to give him uh, favor as he leads those who are responding to some of the chaos, to some of the unrest, to the, to the uh, peaceful protest that's taking place. I pray that they would use restraint. I'm reminded of the words that uh, the psalmist wrote in, in Psalm, uh, the second Psalm. He said, therefore you kings be wise, be warned you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and celebrate his rule. And I pray, Lord, that you would cause those who enforce the laws of this land would um, serve you with fear and celebrate your rule as well. And I want to lift up the, the chief of Desert Hot Springs, Jim Henson, the chief of the Palm Springs PD, uh, Brian Reyes, the chief of uh, the Cathedral City Police Department, George Crum, um, former chief, he was gone for a season and now he's back. I pray that you would give him guidance, direction, wisdom and insight, Lord. And I wanna pray also for the chief of police of the city of where I personally live, and that's uh, the city of Indio, and I pray for Mike Washburn. Lord, continue to surround these people with um, sources of wisdom and insight, cause them to turn to you, cause them to um, Seek your face, Lord. I pray that um, we, as we are subject to the governing authorities, as we submit to their righteous authority, I pray that they would continue to walk in righteousness. Father, I pray that you would replace lawlessness with righteousness, that you would replace violence with peace, and that you would replace arrogance and pride with submission. And Lord, we Thank you that we can come to you and we can petition you and expect that you will answer us. Your word um, gives us uh, insight and wisdom in these matters. And I, I thank you that we can pray your word and know that we're praying in accordance with your will. And I give you praise tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, my wife and I, Daniel and Heather. I'm going to be praying about the anger and the hatred that's so prevalent in our country, and then she's going to follow praying for peace. I'm going to pray James 1, excuse me, James 4, 1 through 4. What causes the quarrels and what causes the fights among you? Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? You desire what you do not have, so you murder. You covet and you cannot obtain, so you fight and you quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your own passions. You adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. So first I want to pray for our hearts. Uh, for Christians and non-Christians alike. Uh, the first line here said, what causes the quarrels and the fights among you? It says, is it not this? Is it not the, the evil desires and the passions that are at war within you? And Jesus tells us that every evil comes from our own hearts. And I pray that the world would, would acknowledge their sinfulness. So uh, fighting and racism and justice, discrimination, the rioting and all the hatred, it all comes from the human heart. That is the source, and so I pray for Christians. Uh, Lord, I pray for a fresh call to holiness for Christians. 
uh, a commitment to sanctification, to give their lives to that growth process uh, so that uh, the fruit of our lives would be holiness and that we would be a great witness to the world. Lord, we are set apart as the church. We are representatives. And I pray for this return to holiness. I pray for the unsaved, Lord. Uh, You're the answer to our brokenness. The gospel of Jesus Christ, your death and resurrection, is the answer for our brokenness. Uh, It is the answer for reconciliation. It's the answer for racial and ethnic uh, diversity and harmony. It is the gospel. And so I pray that they would experience the gospel, that the lost people of America would experience the gospel. And so help us, Lord, to shine the light of the gospel so that they can see it. Uh, Anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires, and so help us, first and foremost, Lord, to be examples of your righteousness. And secondly, I pray that the truth would be declared from Christians and churches, Lord, that we would be a voice uh, for justice, that we would be a voice for the weak, that we would be a voice for the oppressed, those who can't stand up for themselves, those who cannot speak for themselves. We stand up for them, and we raise our voices to speak the truth, and we do that without being ashamed. Uh, Psalms 89, 14 says, Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Love and faithfulness go before you. And so if, if righteousness and justice is the foundation of your throne, we will stand for righteousness and justice, and we will take it to the world. Uh, so let the outcome here, Lord, be that your love and faithfulness would be displayed in Jesus' name. Amen. And we're going to be continuing to read in James 4, verses 6 through 10. Uh, but after you've prayed, Daniel, I'm reminded of what Jesus says on the Sermon on the Mount and how he says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. And ladies and gentlemen, that's our true identity. We are sons and daughters of God, and let's cling to that, and let's be peacemakers. I know a lot of us, we've been taught that uh, being peaceful is actually a passive thing, but he didn't say uh, to hold on to a peaceful passivity. He said, be a peacemaker, and that's very active to me, um, knowing that he is the prince of peace, right? He is our source, and when we are the peacemakers, then we are recognized as the sons of God. And so we're going to continue in James chapter 4, verses 6 through 10, and it says, But he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble, Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. Now, in this scripture, it says that we are to submit to God. That's an action that we can take. It says to resist the devil, but it doesn't end there. It says to draw near to God, to cleanse our hands, to purify our hearts. And what I love here, especially in this time, it's okay to mourn. It's okay to not laugh through the uncomfortable. It's okay to pause, and it's okay to mourn because repentance needs to happen in our hearts. And when we are humble before the Lord, he will exalt us in due time. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we repent, Lord. Father, I am so sorry for the silence of your people and the passivity of your people. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we submit ourselves to you. We apologize for standing with the enemy at times. We resist him now, and we draw near to you, Lord. Thank you for drawing near to us. We cleanse our hands, Father. Purify our hearts. Give us sound minds, Lord. 
Grant us empathy for those who are suffering and let us mourn with them. And Lord, we humble ourselves before you knowing that you are our source of peace. And may we go boldly as the peacemakers. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, my name is Jeremy, and this is my uh, beautiful wife, Lupita, and we've been asked to pray for the families and our children, so I'm going to have uh, my wife read a, a verse, and then uh, we'll pray. Um, I first want to encourage you, uh, like we're saying, we're going to be praying for the children and our families. I just want to encourage you to not just pray for your children, but pray with your children. Um, right now, it can be such a scary time and so many questions, a lot of anxiety, just even as adults, so even more so for our children. Um, they hear everything that we're talking about. They hear things in the stores. You know, they see all this stuff that's going on, and it's, it can be very frightening for a young child. So obviously age appropriate, you know, the more you, you know, the older they are, the more you can explain to them. But I would just really encourage you to pray with them so that they see, you know, mommy and daddy we are all in agreement, we're praying. And um, the verse we have is Isaiah 54, 13 through 14 and 17. All your children will be taught by the Lord and great will be their peace. In righteousness, he will be established. Tyranny will be far from you. You will have nothing to fear. Terror will be far removed. It will not come near you. No weapon formed against you will prevail and you will refute every tongue that accuses you. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and this is their vindication from me, declares the Lord. And Pastor Mike tells us often that if you pray the word, you are praying God's perfect will. So what I thought I would do is kind of just pray through that verse for our families and for our children. So Lord, we do pray that in a world where so many things want to influence and teach our kids that we want to look to you to be their ultimate source of truth. We pray that they're grounded in their faith in Christ, as your word says, and that those seeds of faith that are sown into their lives will not return void. And as a result of them basing their lives on truth and the truth of your word, we know and believe that they will be filled with your peace which we know is a peace that will lead them and will guide them everywhere they go. And at that same time, we pray that peace over our families. We speak unity and harmony in our marriages and in our homes, and we pray that we may live lives as righteous and set apart, that we will seek to do good and represent Jesus to those around us. And we thank you that fear will be far from us. We thank you for your protection over our families. We pray that we will be protected physically and spiritually and mentally. And we do believe and speak it into existence as it says here in Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17, that no weapon formed against our children and our families will prevail. We know that you are our strength and our protection against the enemy that would try to defeat us. And because it says this, we know this to be true, that this is our heritage. This is our right because we are your servants and because we love you. And we thank you that we are blessed in your name and that we are justified through your grace over us. And we thank you that this is done by faith in the all-powerful name of Jesus. Amen. I've also been asked to pray for the pandemic that we're still in the middle of. And, and as we're dealing with many things in our nation, um, the pandemic is still a part of our nation, part of our world, a part of people's lives. I was uh, reminded as we came up here that there was 150 or so new cases that uh, came up in our county here. So we want to pray and believe God over this situation, believe that God is going to continue to lead us and guide us and protect us. And so, Father, we do want to lift up, first of all, the families that have been affected by this pandemic and this virus. God, we just pray for your peace. We pray for your comfort over them, Father. We pray, God, as they're dealing with loss, 
Father, whether it's, it's loss of life or it's loss of jobs, income, or uh, fear gripping our hearts and our minds, God, we just come against that in the name of Jesus. And we just pray your perfect peace over it. We pray that you will heal these families, that you will be a God of restoration, that you'll restore, Father God, what was taken from them, Lord. Father, we do want to pray for continued protection over our families and our children here in our valley and in our, in our state and in our nation and our world, God, that you will just put a hedge of protection around them, Lord. God, that you will keep them strong, that you will keep this virus away from them, Father God, that we can walk in perfect health and peace in our bodies, Lord. Father, we do want to lift up the task force members, Lord God, that you have uh, put in charge over in our nation, Father God, and in, in dealing with this virus. Father, we just pray for wisdom for them. We pray for direction for them. God, we don't pray for their opinion, but we pray for supernatural wisdom that comes only from you. That, God, you will help them to, to strategize and figure out exactly the best way, Father, to combat and come against this, this deadly virus. Father, we just thank you that you're going to bless them and give them peace, Father, as well. Father, we just pray for all the researchers and, and laboratories, Father, that are, are rushing to get uh, a vaccine for this virus. Father, we just pray for wisdom for them. God, we just pray that you will give them a, a heavenly wisdom, Father, that far supersedes their natural wisdom, Father God, that you will lead them and guide them in that so that, Father, they can uh, get a vaccine, Father, to keep this virus from affecting more lives. We just pray that as they test that virus or that vaccine, Father, that you will keep uh, safe those that have uh, come forward to be tested, Father, that you will help this to be a complete success and that, Father, that you will eradicate this from our lives. And we know, Lord God, that we can trust in you and your will is that we walk healthy and whole and we speak that over this father and we thank you that this is done lord by faith in jesus name amen thank you pastor jeremy and stephanie remember being at Oral roberts house probably in the 20th century one of the greatest healing evangelists and his wife, Evelyn, brought him his afternoon medications and vitamins. And he held them up and he said, you know, this came from God's green earth, just like our food. I think it would work better if we just prayed over them. <laughs> and so I think about uh, Jeremy's prayer just now, how gracious it is that the Lord has some answers in his earth that he's mm -hmm. already put here. And we're trusting God to guide those who are doing the research to come out with those answers. Absolutely. We want to pray, Stephanie, for spiritual pastors and the spiritual leaders of our Coachella Valley. And let me tell you, we have some phenomenal pastors here in the Coachella Valley, and they are warriors. Um, and we want to pray for them. You mentioned the spiritual warfare that we're in. In Ephesians chapter 6, after Paul gives this long discussion about putting on the whole armor of God, here's what he says we're suited up for. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for that utterance, and Paul throws in his prayer request, that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak it. And then in Colossians, he says something very similar. Devote yourselves to prayer. Be watchful and thankful and pray for us too. Would you put us on your prayer list? And this Colossians 4, 2 through 4 prayer would be so apropos. Pray for us too that we may open a door for, that he may open a door for our message. And that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should. Always wrestling in prayer for you that you may stand firm in all all the will of God, mature and fully assured. Very good scripture for pastors, huh? <laughs> Pray for us that the message of the Lord may spread rapidly and be honored just as it was with you. And pray that we may de be delivered from wicked and evil people. For not everyone has faith, but the Lord is faithful 
and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. Second, uh, Second Thessalonians 3, 1 through 3. Let's pray for our pastors right now here in the Coachella Valley. And um, there'll be those outside of our church who'll be praying for pastors, but you're praying for us too. But let's pray for them because we believe that they're on the forefront of the spiritual warfare that's going here in the Coachella Valley. Lord, we pray for our pastors exactly what these verses encourage us to, that you would deliver them from unreasonable and wicked men for those in their community and some even in their congregations that would attack them with ill intent, that you would guard their hearts, guard their families' hearts, and that you would set a hedge of protection around them physically, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. Thank you for your guidance in their lives. And Lord, we just claim your promise as the great shepherd of the sheep that they will hear your voice and a stranger they will not follow. Because, Lord, they're under shepherds, under the great shepherd, and they need to hear what you're whispering. Lord, we, as John, lay our head upon your chest to be close to hear you whisper in our ear. We ask you that we would have your voice speaking so clearly. And, Lord, for those pastors who are struggling right now, their churches are struggling that you would lift them up, that you would strengthen them, you would encourage them, and that, Lord, you would speak a word in their heart. They're bringing direction to your people. They need your direction. So thank you for that, and we pray for their financial needs to be met. Thank you that our God shall supply all their need according to your riches and glory. Thank you for supplying every need of their lives but also of their churches and ministries because it's your ministry and it's your church. We thank you for that, Lord, as we pray in Jesus' name. Stephanie, Jesus was having a talk with his disciples, and he asked them a pointed question. Who do you say that I am? And Peter answered pretty quickly, said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed that to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth would be loosed in heaven. So Jesus is telling them, Stephanie, the church is built on the revelation of who he is. Mm -hmm. Church is built on Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we just want to, we want you to know as our church that we're praying for you. And I want you to just keep the switch of faith turned on. You know, it's dark times for sure, but you know what? When the light shines out of darkness, it's the greatest light of all. And it only takes a, a small spark to get a whole forest on fire. We've actually seen that with the rioting and the things going on in our nation today. How much more shall the gospel of Jesus Christ go forth in a dark place? Here is a great prayer I want to pray for our church, and that is Ephesians 1, 16 through 21. It says, I, Paul, cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of your calling, what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him on the right hand in the heavenly places, far above principalities and powers and, and, uh, excuse me, principalities and powers and might and dominion in every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. 
And then Paul's prayer in Ephesians chapter 3. And this is our prayer. Lord, we bow our knees in the, Father, in the name of our Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that you would grant us, according to the riches of your glory, to be strengthened by might in our spirit, through your spirit in our inner man, that Christ may dwell there in our hearts, and that we would be rooted and grounded in love that we may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that we may be filled with all the fullness of God. Mm, beautiful. And I want to pray for you, our family. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus that you've got this, that you've got the name of Jesus, that you've got us cradled, Father, in your beautiful hands. Lord, tonight we pray for our church family. And Lord, we thank you that your hand is upon them. And this is even the church abroad, the church in our nation, the church in the other lands. We, we pray for those abroad, our entire world, Lord, that you are bringing us together as one. We pray that our eyes are opened in this hour, Father, to what you're saying and what you are doing in our lives, Lord. That as we see darkness, Father, I thank you. You help us see through the eyes of faith the things that you have in store, not only for us, but for others. Lord, we pray for your hand of deliverance upon our nation, upon this world. We pray for your hand of deliverance upon our church families. Lord, we pray for a prosperity. Lord, that when it seems to be no way, God, you have a way of opening the doors for us. Lord, we put our total trust and faith in you to keep us, to care for us, to love us. Lord, we trust you, and we entrust our life and our children with you. And we want to close with this verse of scripture and then with a, a worship song, and that is in John 16, the word says, I have told you these things.